You're listening to the Atlanta Dream Center Church Podcast. If you'd like to support this ministry, you can give at www.dreamcenterchurch.com, where every dollar helps advance the kingdom of God. We hope that this message edifies and encourages you to do the great things God has called you to do. It's been about a year since I was in here teaching y'all. For those of y'all that don't know, my name is Pastor Clarence. Uh, I am the youth pastor here at this church, so I'm typically in the back room teaching our wonderful youth, uh, and, uh, and thankfully, uh, God has blessed us with a team uh, to be able to step in when uh, I either come in here or, you know, want to teach. So we have Mr. Andrew. For those of y'all that don't know Andrew, Andrew is our drummer uh, that will be back there teaching today, and he is an amazing, yeah, Madison, that's Madison's husband. Uh, <laughs> And, uh, and and Andrew is an amazing man of God who loves the Word of God and he loves teaching the Word of God. Uh, so your youth are in great hands. Um, and for those of you that don't know, this is my beautiful wife. I'm gonna embarrass her because she loves it. Come on, come on, hey, hey, hey now, hey now, give it up. You know what I'm saying? This is my beautiful wife of five years. Uh, we have two beautiful kids, Ariana and Levi, and they are the best. Um, even when they don't let us get sleep. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Praise Jesus for our village. Uh, so today, uh, guys, I want to, uh, man, I want to talk to y'all. I want to challenge y'all. I want to encourage y'all uh, with, with, with something that the Lord has put on my heart. Um, and that is uh, the fact that our lives, it's bigger than us. Uh, so I titled this message, It's Bigger Than You, uh, because... It, it, it really is. Uh, and, 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 I, and I mean that in the sense of the way that we choose to live our lives, right? Um, so what we do on this side of eternity, right, what we do on this side of heaven will uh, directly affect what happens to us in eternity. Everybody agree with that? All right, good. We all in agreement with that. But that directly affects you, right? Right? That is, that is the, the direct consequences of the way that you choose to live, right? Now, what we, uh, what we sometimes forget, um, and, and it was funny because this morning, uh, one of the prayer requests that we got this morning was uh, for, for somebody to stop being selfish, and I wholeheartedly agree with that, right? But the thing is this, is that we're all selfish. Would y'all agree? Uh, come on, don't lie. Would y'all agree? Yeah, yeah. Uh, for those of you, has anybody, I know, how many people have kids or have worked with kids or have kids in your life? Are kids selfish? Yeah, yeah. As much as I love Levi, Levi is eight months old. And, uh, and as, as much as I love him and his smile and them chubby cheeks and them rolls in his legs and the extra muscles that he got on top of muscles, uh, as much as I love it, that young man is selfish. When, when he wants what he wants, he gonna let you know. And if you don't move fast enough, oh, he gonna let you know. I was feeding him last night. And, uh, and, and I'm not, obviously not scooping and shoveling food in his mouth fast enough. And uh, at one point he goes, ah, ah, ah. I'm like, hey man, hey, relax, okay? I'm gonna feed you, you gonna eat, all right? It's gonna be okay. Uh, but he's selfish, he wants what he wants when he wants it, right? We are all selfish. Uh, and, and a lot of the times we live our lives in that way. Uh, we make decisions based on what benefits us, right? Um, Thinking about, you know, when I'm driving in this Atlanta traffic and, you know, people are being Atlanta, right? Um, and, uh, and, and as much as the Holy Spirit is telling me to calm down, relax, it's going to be okay. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm selfish enough to speed up, get beside that person and look at them like they did something wrong because, you know, it's Atlanta. Why not, you know? Uh, but that's, that's selfish to me. I'm not, I'm not considering the people that I'm putting in harm's way because I want my way, and I want them to know that I seen them cut me off, and they looked at me when they did it, and you know what I'm saying? All right, we're going to let that go. <laughs> y'all, y'all live here. Y'all know what I'm saying. Um, but that's me being selfish. That's me thinking about me, right? Don't get me wrong, that person's thinking about them too, but how, I don't know if they're saved. I know that I am a believer of Jesus Christ, and so the standards that I live my life by are different than what they live by. The same decisions that they can make, I cannot make because of the person, of the, the king that I serve, of the Lord that I've made Lord of my life. And I, and I say Lord for a reason because we all know him as Savior. He saved us from whatever we did back in the day and whatever we're doing currently, but he is also Lord, Master, right? Uh, but that's something that we have to choose. Okay, 
Um, and so, uh, and so, I want to talk to us about uh, three different ways we we see all throughout Scripture um, how lives were uh, lived and how they affected three different areas. One was the church, the second was unbelievers, and the third was the next generation. Right. So, what I'm saying is this: is that the way that you live directly affects you. Yes, but it does more than that. It directly affects the church, and I mean the capital C at large body of Christ, not just this church, okay? It affects unbelievers, and it affects the next generation. Well, how? Well, I'm gonna tell you, okay? Jeez, give me a chance. (laughs) All right, Uh, so it affects the church at large because of the fact that uh, without you, the church does not grow. That's a fact. Don't get me wrong. God is sovereign, right? God can do whatever he wants to. Uh, he, he literally blessed people with different tongues and it brought 3,000 people in. That's Acts, right? Uh, God is currently uh, visiting people in dreams and in visions, encountering them, right? To this day, there, there, there are thousands and thousands of stories of people encountering Jesus through dreams and visions. So don't get me wrong. God can and will do what he wants to and encounter people however he wants to, but... You were chosen specifically for this, for evangelism, right? You were chosen, handpicked, handcrafted to be a part of the body of Christ. Not just so that you can get to heaven, though. That's not the goal. Although, it, yes, it's the goal, but it's not the goal, right? Because how selfish of me would it be to go visit this amazing restaurant And not tell nobody about it. Yeah, I know. I know. Right? How selfish of me would it be to go to Fernando Fernando and Sylvia's house and eat this amazing crab boil and not flaunt it off to everybody? Hmm? Come on now, preach. Listen. It showed, it ministered to me. I I did. Thank you for asking. I took took pictures and I sent them to who who needed to know. (laughs) Right? But when we, when we are excited about something, we, we tell it. Amen. Would y'all agree? Disagree? Right? Same thing with movies, right? Right? I just saw this bomb movie. Uh, it was called Avengers Endgame. You know, that was years ago. But how many, how many people did we tell about that movie? Yo, that movie was crazy, son. I did not expect the ending. You go into a whole fit about how amazing this movie is. But when it comes to Jesus, we get... Uh, we, we kind of shrink back into the shadows. When it comes to the one that saved our soul, we kind of shrink back into the shadows. We're not as excited for some reason. And this is not for everybody, but hey, some, some of us, I know for me, uh, uh, I struggle uh, with uh, evangelism, right? So I've been challenging myself in that by going out on Saturdays, <clears throat> plug, by going out on Saturdays with the Dr. Block, Knocking on doors, ministering to people, inviting people out to church, evangelizing the people, because that is, that is something that I struggle with. And so the Lord is challenging me to step out there and do better. The Lord is challenging me to push beyond my comfort zones because the church does not grow without me. Right? The church does not grow without you. So that's my first challenge, okay? If you are uncomfortable with evangelism, start by coming on Saturdays. I promise you it's not difficult and it's not as scary as it uh, may seem, but it is a a great introduction into uh, uh, talking to people about Jesus. It is. And then you get to do it with a group of like-minded believers. You know what I'm saying? Like how how much cool, how how fun is that? Right? I know I have a good time out there. Right? Uh, Now, secondly, the second part of this, and uh, uh, I skipped my scripture. Matthew 9, 37, for those of y'all that need me to uh, reference some Bible scriptures, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Now, Matthew 9, 37 says this, then he said to his disciples, the harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Sorry, the laborers are few. This is Jesus talking, right? And he's basically saying that there are thousands and thousands and thousands of people out there that are ready to be harvested for the kingdom of heaven, but... We don't have enough laborers to go out there and get them. But the thing is this, is that the church is full of laborers. But what are they doing? What are we doing? How are we living our lives? Is it in a way that encourages other people to want to be a part of what we know to be 
the best decision that I've ever made in my life. I love my wife, right? Best decision I've made in my life. Love my kids. Best decision I've made in my life. But without Jesus, none of that uh, uh, has, has the same value. This marriage does not have the same value without Jesus. My kids don't have the same value without Jesus. And that's because he's teaching me how to love, okay? All right? So we got we to do better, all right? That's the challenge. Get out there and evangelize. Now, the second part of this is how, how it directly affects the church is this. In uh, my next script is 1 Peter 4, 10 through 11. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of of God as each. Oh, if anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability with which God supplies that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Each and every one of you have been given a gift. None of you are lacking a gift, right? That's what, that's what the Bible says. Each of you have been given a gift by God. What are you doing with it, y'all? Sorry, forget the y'all. Y'all got to remember, I'm a youth pastor, okay? What are you doing with it? Are you sitting on it? Are you just letting it, you know what I'm saying, collect dust? Are you letting it rust, sitting in the back cabinet, looking at it, looking all pretty? It looks pretty, right? I was talking to the kids the other day, and I was asking them what was their favorite gift. What, what was the gift that they got that was their most favorite gift? Uh, one of them said a hoverboard. Another of them said their PlayStation, uh, you know, all this other stuff. I told them my ring, this right here. This is my favorite gift. And I was talking to them, and I was telling them, now, if I took this, my favorite gift, love you, if I took this gift that my wife gave to me, and I sat it on a shelf and let it collect dust, what would that say to her? Come on, disrespectful. I don't care. Come on, y'all can talk to me. I'm a youth pastor. You know what I'm saying? We talk. We have conversations, so talk to me. Huh? That I don't care. You're right. Mm. You better use them bit words. Come on, brother. Undermining your other half. You selfish. Come on. Goodness. Hey. He's, he's single, ladies. Uh, listen. But it would, it, he's right. It would be disrespectful, right? It would, it, it would be, commu- now, maybe I'm not communicating this with my words, but I'm communicating to her in my actions that I don't have enough respect for her or the gift that she's giving me and saying yes to me to be my wife enough to wear the ring that she's giving me, right? Because this is not just a, a symbol for me, is it? It's to let all the people out there know that, hey, I hung my jersey up, it's in retirement, and I'm not coming back out. You got it, all right? As a, as a married man now. Happily married, okay? Right? Come on now, listen. Right? If we continue to, to, to sit on whatever, and, and let me say this, right? Gifts are not always things that are uh, seen by others. Not, not all the time, right? Um, for those of y'all that don't know, Miss Judy just wrote a book. Yeah, come on. Come on. And uh, that is a gift that God has placed on the inside of her. But that's not the only gift, right? Miss Ms. Judy is an, is an amazing woman of God. She's an amazing intercessor. She's an amazing prophetic woman of God. These are the gifts that God has blessed her with to benefit and edify the church. What is your gift? What is your gift? Because for some people, uh, all of you know, guys know that I'm, I'm a part of the worship team. One of my gifts is playing music, right? Uh, Evelyn and Eli are much better at it than I am, but that's okay. Right? Another one of my gifts is talking, right? The, the, the scripture said, if you speak, then speak. Uh, uh, what? Mm, yep. I don't want to misquote it, so I'm going to wait for it because y'all not going to get, get me for blaspheming. <laughs> if anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. That's what the Bible say. Some people have an amazing gift of gab. If you know somebody like that, raise your hand. I sure do. I know a couple people. An amazing gift of gab. An amazing ability to talk and talk 
and talk and talk and talk. Come on. Come on. But that's the gift that God has given him. And I'm not going to stop them. I might walk away in the middle of it, but I'm not going to stop them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Listen, if that, if that is your gift, use it. If you have an amazing gift to be able to write, use it. If your gift is to, 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 to listen to people, use it. This is how your gift is to be used. It literally says that it's to be used for one another, to minister to one another. He's talking about the body of Christ here, to minister to one another. Your gift was given to you to edify and encourage the body of Christ. But if you're sitting on it, then we're missing a part of us that, uh, uh, that, that, that God placed in it, uh, sorry, that God placed within us to help us grow and to help us accomplish the goals that He set for us. The Bible says that we are all members of one body. We are all members of one body with a different function. And if the pinky didn't work, well, then as, as, as insignificant as we may think a pinky is, go ask somebody who doesn't have one. As insignificant as we think an ear is, go ask somebody who doesn't have one. Each and every one of you are important. Each and every one of you have a gift that God has placed on the inside of you to use to benefit, encourage, and edify this body of Christ so that we can continue to go out there and minister to the world. But if you're sitting on it and you're wasting it, we are missing a vital part of our body. If you call this your church home. Amen? Amen. Y'all with me? Y'all good? Y'all sleepy? Am I making y'all sleepy? Good. Next is unbelievers. The way we choose to live our life directly affects unbelievers. Uh, how many people grew up in church? I did. I did. It's kind of sort of. That's all right. You know what I'm saying? If you didn't, uh, never mind. Uh, but I grew up in church. And one of the things that uh, uh, turned me away from making a decision in my own personal life Right, because I can't, I can't live on my mama's faith as, as 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 great as her faith may have been, right? I can't live on my grandma's prayers as, as as amazing as her prayers may have been, right? That wasn't a personal decision in my life. I did not make that decision because when I looked at believers, I thought that they were stuck up and 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 felt like they had it all together. Well, I'm just being honest, okay? I'm just saying what y'all thought, all right? Uh, I felt like they thought that they had it all together, that they could do no wrong, that uh, whatever they did in the past didn't exist or didn't happen, right? <laughs> hey, uh, but what they didn't realize is that the way that they lived their life directly affected me, an unbeliever at that point, because I had not accepted Jesus Christ into my life. And I'm, I'm in the church, Right? Because my mom and my dad were heavily involved, I was there every Sunday, every Wednesday, every Tuesday, every Saturday for practice, every prayer event we had, I was there. Whether I wanted to or not, because ain't nobody disrespecting my mama. Listen. But the way that they chose to live their life directly affected me, an unbeliever, to where I did not want to be a part of uh, uh, this, this body of Christ because I didn't feel like... I, I belonged there because I had too much going on. I was doing too much out there in the world, right? That's why I believe one of the, in, in, in Revelations, it says that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. It is important for us not to just remember our testimonies and where God brought us from, but also to speak them out loud because people need to hear what you've gone through and how far God has brought you. People need to know how good God is. And if you refuse to let them know because of your testimony, because of your pride, because you want to look a certain way, well, then you're telling them that God is not good enough to save them where they're at. Your testimony is important, not just for you, but for those unbelievers who are in the same situations that you found yourself in before our gracious God decided that he wanted you in his kingdom. The reason why I can uh, uh, work with youth and identify with you so well is because I'm not afraid to let them know I'm not perfect, nor will I ever be perfect. Amen. That God saw me in the midst of my dirt and he plucked me out and he set me on this solid ground. There are people out there who need to hear, need to hear. 
They may not want to hear it, but they need to. They need to hear what it is that God brought you from. What it is that the Lord pulled you through. The darkness that the Lord shined his light into so that you can see your way out of. They need to hear it. Because in that scripture, I, I, I believe that it's not just us that overcome. It's also the other person. Because they realize that God is good enough to pull you out. Well, he can do the same thing for me. What it was for me that, uh, that, that opened my eyes or, or, or that, um, that helped me to even consider becoming a Christian was a youth pastor that bugged the mess out of me. I could not stand him. Could not. Because every time he would see me, how you doing? Doing all right? How's school going? School going good? Good. How's your family doing? Leave me alone, man. I just want to sit in the back, all right? I just want to sit in the back, chill, let y'all do y'all thing, and me go about my way, right? But because of the love of God in him and because of what he went through in his life growing up in church, he was able to identify with me and encourage me in those moments. He began to tell me about his story. And be open and honest. He he was even honest about his struggles that he was having in the midst of being a Christian while being saved. Because let's be honest, just because you get saved don't mean everything turns into rainbows and cotton candy. It don't work like that. As much as I would love for it too, that's not going to happen until we get to heaven. I'm sorry. He began to be honest with me. He began to open up with me. And then I began to realize, oh, he's just a man like I am. He made a flesh and bone just like I am. The only difference is that when he struggles with things, he goes to the guy that can give him an answer. I'm going to substances and other things that's only going to leave a hole in my heart when I'm finished. Come on. I'm running to other people that can only give me good advice. They can't set, they can't set me free. They can't heal my broken heart. They can't fill that hole in me that was left there by uh, my father who uh, got a divorce and left the home. They can't do that. They don't have the power to do that. But Jesus does. This is the gift that we have been giving in our testimonies. It's not just for us. The way that you choose to live is not just, it's bigger than you. It's so much bigger than you. And yes, that, you know, applies a lot of pressure. Not going to lie to you. It does. does. But the thing is this, the, the, the craziest part of it all is this, is that all we got to do is say yes to God. That's it. We overcomplicate it by saying what we can do and what we cannot do. But the thing is this, on a moment-by-moment situation in your day, if you say yes to God every opportunity that you get in the day, Instead of thinking about, well, I got to do all this. God, in this moment, I'm going to say yes. And let your yes be yes and leave it at that. God, in this moment, I'm going to say yes. God, in this moment, I'm going to say yes. And then you'll look back five years later and you'll realize, man, I am a lot farther than I was five years ago. You'll look back and you'll be like, man, it was not as hard as I thought it was. Don't get me wrong. We, obviously, we, we all have sin in, in us and, and we, we were all challenged by sin, Right? So I'm not saying that it's going to be uh, uh, as easy as I'm making it seem just by saying yes. But that, there, there is going to be a struggle and there is going to be a fight. But at the end of the day, you'll realize that your saying yes in this moment was so much worth it here. My saying yes back then, and this is me moving on to the next generation part. My saying yes back then has now benefited my kids. Amen. Now I can be the father that they deserve. Now I can be a husband to my wife that she deserves. Now I can be a brother and a friend that you all deserve. Now I can be a pastor to those kids because without God, who knows where I would be? I have an idea, and it's definitely not here. If I can go back just a little bit, just to, uh, I want to talk about the story of Daniel. Everybody, uh, or if, if you grew up in church, you know this story, so I'm, I'm going to give a, a brief version of it. Um, in the story of Daniel, Daniel is uh, captured, him and his friends and, and some other people, uh, they are captured and they are taken to the city of Babylon where King Nebuchadnezzar uh, is trying to indoctrinate them 
and uh, and they're given this this amazing food and wine and all of this stuff. And Daniel and his friends are the only ones that say, "Nah, I'm good." Yes, this is the message version. <laughs> they are the only ones that say, "Nah, I'm all right. I'm good. Thank you, though. I'll I'll take my uh, my lettuce and my water." And uh, and at the end of ten days, I promise you, I'm gonna be stronger and smarter than everybody else. And God blessed them. This was their first act, standing up for what they believe in, regardless of the things that were going on around them, regardless of being captured by a a city that was not their home, by a king who would literally kill them. This was their first stand. King Nebuchadnezzar goes on. He has a dream. Uh, he, he asks all of his uh, magicians and, you know, uh, people that are supposed to be smart, right? He asks all of them, what is my dream? And tell me the, 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 the reason for having a dream. Daniel is the only one to answer the, 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 king, the king's request. He tells him the dream, and then he explains what the dream means. Now, the only reason why he, he was able to do this is because of his relationship with God. That was the only reason. That was the, literally, the only difference between Daniel and these magicians and other uh, uh, supposed to be intelligent people was that he served the king of kings and the lord of lords. God made known to him what uh, the king's dream was. He explained it to him, and then Daniel was uh, uh, promoted in a city that was not his home over people that were not his own, that he was supposed to be submitted to or submissive to. If we go on, we'll see uh, that King Nebuchadnezzar, uh, in that moment, he has a, he has a uh, in the moment salvation, I, I like to call it. Because in the moment, he says, your God is the king of kings, right? Next chapter, this man builds a golden image and tells people to worship him. What happened to God being the king of kings? <laughs> now, obviously, this is a book, so I don't know how much time was in between this point and him building the image, but... Right. So he had an in the moment salvation. Right. We all been in church and we've had the goosebumps and the feels and we've been crying. Right. And uh, and then we go and our week is kind of in the moment. Right. Got the feels. You got the emotions. But did you encounter God, though? Because there's a difference. When you encounter God, oh, you know it. Your, your, Your life is not the same. You can't live that week the same way. And so then uh, we go on, he builds the idol. Uh, we all know the, the, the three Hebrew boy story, uh, right? They get thrown into the fire, burn, burn, burn. There's a fourth man in the fire. Uh, Jesus steps in. Uh, the king is embarrassed, right? Uh, and then it goes on. And in chapter 4, verse 37, it says, Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven. This is a king. Admitting that he is not the king of kings. I extol and honor the king of heaven, all of whose works are truth. Come on, man. All of whose works are truth in his ways, justice. And those who walk in pride, he is able to put down. This is a king that literally just told an entire city to bow down and worship me. Who was saying, okay, I was wrong. I'm sorry. God, the king of heaven is the king of kings. The way that Daniel and his friends chose to live, they, they did nothing spectacular. Don't get me wrong, standing, hey, submitting yourself to be tossed in the fire, that's kind of crazy, okay? Not going to lie to you, right? But all they did was say yes to Jesus, yes to God in every moment. And because of the way that they chose to live their life, King Nebuchadnezzar, this, this is where the transformation, this is where the God encounter happened. King Nebuchadnezzar decided that, okay, I'm not king of kings. My bad, y'all. The king of heaven, the king of heaven, all of who works the truth and ways are justice. He is the king of kings. Who is the Nebuchadnezzar in your life? Who is the person that God has placed in your life that your life is supposed to impact in a mighty way where they look at you and they say, what must I do to have the hope that you have? What must I do to have the joy that you walk in despite what else is going on out here in the world? What must I do to, uh, 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 to, to reap everything that you have? What I got to do? What must I do to be saved? 
You ain't got to answer it. Think about it. Because when you go into this next week, I want you to think about that person. And I want you to be intentional about the way that you live your life in front of them. Because they are watching. Somebody's watching. Somebody's always watching. I don't, I, don't, I don't care if you have children or don't have children. Somebody at your job is watching. Somebody at your school is watching. Somebody in your complex or in your neighborhood is watching. Somebody at the grocery store is watching how you carry yourself. What is the difference between you who consider yourself to be a believer in Jesus Christ and them? What's the difference? Now, if we move on to the next generation, uh, this one is an easy one. Uh, all I got to do is say Adam and Eve. Y'all get it. Y'all know, hey. <laughs> to this day, we are still uh, 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 reaping the consequences of their actions. One little decision to bite a fruit, man. This one tree that you were not supposed to touch. You couldn't just leave it alone? How many of y'all often think about what life would be like right now if they never took a bite? Come on. Because I do. I'm not going to lie to you. To be walking in the garden with God himself? Come on, man. No doubts about if God is real or not. No doubts about how good he is. No doubts about when he's going to show up and when he's not going to show up because he's he right there. Wake up every morning. Good morning, God. How are you today? Listen. But because of that decision that they made then, we are reaping the consequences of that. And it happens from generation to generation to generation. And you can, you can see the patterns if you look at, let's, let's look at your own family because I don't want to, you know, we, we're not going to be judgmental, okay? The Bible tells us not to, so might as well. Right. But I promise you, if you look at your family, you can you can see generational patterns. One simple one is this, because they're not they're not all bad. All right. So that's not what I'm trying to say. One is this, is that my grandma was a teacher. My mom was a teacher and is now a director of a, of a child care facility. And well, now I'm a teacher. Look at that. Come on. To generate, I didn't, I, I didn't grow up wanting to be a teacher. I grew up wanting to be a veterinarian. I thought I was going to work with animals. I said yes to God, and he was like, nope. And I'm all right with that, though. I'm cool with that. Listen, everything that we do, it doesn't just affect us. It affects the church. It affects unbelievers. And it affects the next generation. And I'm going to land right here. Because I want y'all to get it. As easy as it is to consider ourselves in every moment, in every decision, what benefits us, or let's even say what directly benefits uh, those that are uh, in, in our house, because some, sometimes we think about them, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes I'll stop by McDonald's and I'll get Chris or something, I guess. She might be hungry, you know. But as easy as it is to be selfish, because it is easy. I didn't, I, I didn't have to teach my kids how to be selfish. They just came out and was like, yo, give me what I got. Hey, come on, please. Thank you. All that money you thought you had, I need some pampers. That's all another testimony, but it's all right. We'll stay right here. All right, sidetrack real quick. Okay, listen. Can I, can I, can I, be, can I tell you how good God is? Because this is, this is a testimony. I was talking about testimonies earlier. When we had kids, uh, uh, one of the main things we were nervous about was uh, spending on clothes and all this other stuff. Do y'all know that God has provided clothes upon clothes upon clothes, pampers upon pampers upon pampers? Let me, let me tell you something. I know, you know, uh, man, God is good. God is good. We didn't have to buy Ariana anything until she was one. And I literally, nothing, food. Okay, cool. But we didn't have to buy her 
anything. Strollers, somebody paid for it. Car seats, somebody blessed us with one. Because God is faithful, man. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know how, how, how much or, or, or how many times I can say it till, till you get it. God is faithful. God takes care of his children. That is a promise. That's not a suggestion. He takes care of his children. But are we taking care of his house? I want you to think for a moment about all the things that he's done for you and with you. Because sometimes it's with you. He took me overseas to Africa and to Haiti to minister to those people. Those beautiful, beautiful people. Am I taking care of his house? Am I using the gifts that he's placed on the inside of me to encourage and edify the body of Christ? Not just when it's comfortable. Not just when I feel like it. But even in those uncomfortable moments. Even when I'm being challenged in myself. Am I encouraging and edifying the body of Christ? Am I living in a way that encourages people that do not know God to say, what in the world do you have that I don't have that gives you a hope when you shouldn't have it? I know some of your stories. I've had the chance to talk to some of you guys and you guys been through some things. You've been through some challenges. You've been through life. And where you should not have hope, God bless you with hope. Where you should not be encouraged, you are. Where you should have given up years ago, you held on. Who are we? to hold that back from the people out there because they need hope too they need the joy that you have and the thing about joy is not based on your circumstances or it's not based on your emotions that's happiness joy is the peace that you feel in the midst of the storm joy is choosing God regardless of what the world looks like and 2020 was a crazy year. 2020 shook everything. If your hope was in money, it was gone. If you were only feeding yourself here at church, you had to find out how to feed yourself out there. 2020 rocked everybody's lives. The rich, the poor, the black, the white, the yellow, the purple, all of the beautiful colors that God put on this earth. What is it that you held on to that you can share with the people out there? At the end of every uh, service that I have with my kids, most of the time, I'm sorry, most of the time, I challenge them. I give them a weekly challenge. So guess what? It's y'all week. Y'all get it. This week, I want to challenge you. Share your testimony. Share your testimony with somebody. Tell them how good God has been to you. Now, I'm not saying you got to tell them the darkest part of your life. That's not what I'm saying. I told y'all a testimony of how God blessed me our family to not be able to have to financially pay for uh, any of our young. That, that, that is a testimony. Small and insignificant to somebody, but big to me. Those of y'all that have kids, y'all know how big that is. So I'm not saying go out there and just spill your guts out to people, but what I'm saying is go out there and let somebody know how good your God has been to you. 
Let somebody know how good your God, your King, your Savior, your Master, yours, not, yes, mine too, but yours. How good has he been to you? Thinking back on that song, man, oh, how beautiful it is that the love of Jesus saved me. That is your testimony. That Jesus saved you from yourself and still doing it and, and, and when, when it comes to me. He's still saving me from myself time and time again. Time and time again. Because my pride is on 10 sometimes. But because of his goodness, he'll come and say, no, son. Go in this direction, son. Do not respond in that way, son. They cut you off with your kids in the back. Let them have it, son. Maybe, just maybe, they have somewhere to go. Maybe, who knows? Bless them. Pray that they make it to where they're going safely. Pray for your coworkers, son. And I work at the church, so, you know. But it wasn't always the case. That boss that gets on your nerves and know how to press every button, love them. Start praying on your way into wherever you're going. Your life, as much as it directly affects you, it is bigger than you. He did not save you for yourself. last thing because I want to encourage you with this. Scripture tells that you are an ambassador for the kingdom of heaven. That's in 2 Corinthians 5. Go read it. Write it out and put it on your mirror and read it every day. I am an ambassador for the kingdom of heaven, meaning that the authority that God has, that Jesus has in heaven, I have that authority because I was established here by God. I can speak on behalf of heaven with the authority of heaven because I am an ambassador. And my life is bigger than me. We hope that you enjoyed today's sermon. Once again, if you'd like to support this ministry, log on to www.dreamcenterchurch.com to help us advance the kingdom of God. And check us out on the Church Center app and all your favorite social media platforms. Until next time, be blessed and go do the great things God has called you to do.